Hey, how are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning for you. How are you doing, Henry? <laughs> Very good. Mm -hmm. How about you? I'm awake. <laughs> Is it time? It's uh, nine o'clock. Just okay. dropped the kids off at school on now. Okay, so it's for me. It's rest. uh, it's six p.m. Yeah, so you're getting ready to enjoy the evening. <laughs> yeah, I have a few few things to deal with first, but yeah, that's that's yeah. the idea. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I I sent your request by the way, uh, just to for uh, the interview. So I'm looking for the right PM uh, to deliver that because I think it makes more sense that he they are involved in that. Awesome. Uh, deeper details. Um, so uh, as of now, I have someone, but I'm. I mean, uh, so a name has been popped up, but the person itself is not responding. So <laughs> let, let's see. <laughs> okay, cool. No, I appreciate you tracking someone down there. Um, I've got some, I was going to say on the call, I don't have anything formal for today's call. Um, but if anybody mentions, I just have feelers out and some interviews from other teams too. And hopefully getting that information in. Um, and we haven't had much okay. support um, from folks filling out the use there's cases. Some, there is something, I, I mean, it's really specific to Kubernetes in general, but uh, uh, the, I, thought, I thought that the uh, open source uh, demo it was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, there is a... Um, Captain Projects has started to introduce a metric server. Um, and the idea is that uh, in the Kubernetes world, you can have um, default metrics exposed, which is CPU and memory. But if you want to have more, then you need to deploy a metric adapter, but you only have one adapter potential per, cl per cluster, but we usually have multiple cluster uh, providers. Um, so um, they, they have introduced this notion of provider so you can define, I want to use Anatrace, I want to use Datadog, I want to use Prometheus. So you make the, the, the connection settings to the provider. And then there is the, this uh, CRD that says, uh, I'm defining a metric. So I say, this is a uh, throttling. And then you define in the definition of the object, uh, how you can query that metric to uh, mm -hmm. in the backend. Uh, and then at the end, once you have defined that all the metrics that you have asked for is now available in the Kubernetes API. So then you can use it for, so you can query the Kubernetes API and get the metrics that you need. So the, at the end, it's the component who's going to translate it to um, the right um, observability solution. So I know it's mainly related to metrics because of the use case of this, of this, uh, you know, I mean, by design, it's, it's specific for, for metrics. Mm -hmm. But I thought, uh, I don't know if it makes sense to bring that up. Uh, I don't know. For yeah, you... it can make sense. Um, I think just from standpoint, but it's mostly for instrumentation. Is it? So it kind of sounds like it's a, almost the equivalent of a PromQL endpoint where you're scraping the data. Or does it it's have this... the capability to... No, you, you basically you define right. your metrics and the, in the metrics you say, oh, uh, CPU uh, is going... It's going is going to use Prometheus, and here's the PromQL. Uh, uh, throttling is going to be a, a, a Dynatrace query uh, uh, that I'm going to do to extract it from Dynatrace. Uh, uh, the hot pool, I'm going to get it from... Basically, uh -huh. in the metric definition, you define how you're going to extract it. And once it's oh, been okay. defined, then it is going to be exposed in the API, in the metric API of Kubernetes. Okay, so it's just a way of collating all the various sources. Yeah, you create a name, and then you define how you how you actually going to query uh, that data in the right provider. Um, but then once you've defined all the metrics that you are interested in, and then you simply need to do just a simple Kubernetes query API, um, gotcha. and you, you get the metric. Gotcha. OK, that makes sense. So they're kind of normalizing on a specific format the various sources, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, good to talk to them. Um, do you have know some of the folks working on it? Then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can uh, I can ask uh, the team who would be the right person who could present. But it could make sense, yeah. Yeah, that'd be a great place. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'd like to see what they're doing. 
Um, because who knows, there might be other things that they want to add on to it. And if they get more complex, they might support expressions and whatnot. And yeah, but the thing is, that. it doesn't resolve it that it's a uniform query language. It's just that you need define, you define how to query, and then then once it's defined, then it's going to be, you can query in, in a universal way through your Kubernetes API, but you yeah. still need to do that. Oh, I need I need that metric, and here is the right query in the right provider to get the metric. Right. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that could be good. Let's <laughs> continue. Oh, Prothmash flu. Um, and what's that project called? Yeah, uh, the captain call is called Captain Lifecycle Toolkit. The initial captain is K E P T N. Uh, and they uh, they introduced it for their use case, and then they saw the value that they are just not only them interesting that. So then they are putting a specific deployment where you only get the metric component. So then you can do HPA or whatever you want in the cluster using those metric ex external metrics. Yeah, that makes sense. And is the goal of that to be used in the control plane of Kubernetes and for yeah scaling? the the idea is that for example I want to do auto scaling rules and instead of relying on just CPU and memory which is a default metric exposed you can say oh yeah. uh, I want to look at the uh, number of upstream requests from Envoy for example uh, so then if I reach a spe specific throughput I want to add extra workload or you can do yeah. it I want to look at I don't know the the garbage collector, I want to use I mean, whatever you want. So then yeah. you need to, to express which metrics make sense and then you can implement it for for this. But once the other, other aspect is that, for example, uh, in chaos engineering, uh, it means, for example, you can say uh, measure study state and it's also rely on a community's API. And because now it's exposed, you can you can say, oh, uh, my study state, I'm, I'm going to use this metric to say, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, response time is accurate, and then uh, it's going to query that. So then it, you can not only use it for HPA, but you can think of using for other other, other use cases. Uh, from the moment you have a solution that rely on the Kubernetes metric API, then you could you can you can use it. Oh, nice. In the Kubernetes world, is there any kind of a concept of auto terminating pods or whatnot on? Let's say exceptions and logs or other issues. Uh, I, um, as of now, not really. You need a workflow that will do mm. that through Argo. Um, but uh, there's a current discussion about uh, sustainability, for example, in dev or staging environment. Uh, for example, I may want to uh, sleep. So uh, the workload that are basically doing nothing because there's no developers, there's no tester, there's, I mean, nobody's here at the office anymore. So why do I need to keep that workload running where it should be sort of dead? Uh, so uh, it would be great. So there are solution there, but you need to define which one you want to sleep at what time. But it would be great to have like a, a based on event, based on metric, based on whatever rules you've defined, then it will turn off the workload. Mm -hmm. So then you're saving energy, you're saving whatever cost, whatever. You... Mm -hmm. Yeah, or the auto remediation issues too that may not be on traditional signals. We yeah. just want to. But, oh, cool. Yeah, I still need to. I'm ashamed to admit I haven't played with Kate's Kubernetes very much myself. <laughs> I need to someday. Um, but in the previous job, it was all bare metal, and then here it's. Uh, at Netflix, it's all custom <laughs> EC2 stuff, too. Um, and Titus, I guess, is our brand of <laughs> Kubernetes overlay or whatnot. Uh, cool. All right, and welcome, Tony and Prothmesh. Um, so I didn't have anything formal today. I can just give a quick update um, for everybody. Um, I've reached out and heard back from... Julian, who um, worked on PromQL, one of the creators of it. So he's answered the 
overview section of the interview questions, which is great. Uh, so that's a start. I'm going to follow up with him on the metrics portion. And then once that's done, I'll clean it up and we'll get that into the main repo. Um, I've heard back from the Google Monarch team. Uh, they're filling out the overview section, uh, but probably won't get into too many details, unfortunately. But that's OK, um, because it's not not all of it is open source, but the Google monitoring language that's uh, the public facing poor, uh, part is documented and we can pull that into the uh, uh, database that we're creating. Um, I also have heard back from the AWS CloudWatch team, so they're going to be filling it out. Um, and I have finally heard back from, uh, let's see, who was it? Uh, Mark at Datadog about the Datadog query language. So we're getting that in. Still haven't heard back from anyone at Splunk. Um, and then, of course, we have the PPL. We have Henrik's reaching out um, at Dynatrace. And we're still waiting on Lightstep. And also, I did reach out to the KDB folks because I am interested in their work since um, it was one of the early ones. I will, I will reach out to Victoria Metric. So I know the co-founder. Uh, I will ask him if he can also mm -hmm. uh, fill uh, I mean, the overview and then later on the interview, but at least for the overview for Victoria Metrics because they have their own query language as well. Right. The one based on, yeah, uh, prom. So yeah, I did reach out there too, but haven't heard back from uh, Alexander. Um, but yeah, if you could reach out too, I'd appreciate it, please. Yeah, then any, uh, oh, also uh, Sergey working on the uh, Geneva inside Microsoft there um, is going to document the KQLM for us, the internal metrics version of Kusto. So we're getting some of that info. Um, and I still would appreciate help from anybody who would like to take on some of the use cases. Uh, I want to document more of those. And I'm trying to get these interviews wrapped up within, I'd like to do it by the end of September, mid-October. Uh, so that we could move on and get some other work done if we can. That's kind of a goal. Any thoughts, questions on that? Cool. And otherwise, that's all I had for today. Um, any other topics, thoughts? Um, How do we help you again, Chris? Sorry, I, I know you, I think there was supposed to be a link or something I was supposed to click the last time I was on, but I, I think I totally missed the, the yeah, link. Yeah, no worries. Um, are you in the uh, Slack channel too? Uh, you know, I uh, not at the moment, but okay. But I need to join the Slack channel. Yeah, if you join there, that's a good place. And then uh, let me paste the... Work use cases link here. Okay. So that's just the overview of um, kind of how we're documenting the various use cases. And we have a couple in there already. Okay, okay I'll go through that. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, yeah, just uh, put in a stub, if you like, for a question or a use case that you have and would like to document. That'd be wonderful, please. Okay, cool. sounds good. All righty. And if that's it, I think everybody can have the morning or afternoon or evening back. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for attending. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Take care, Al. Bye. Bye.